What's up, YouTube? Today's review is going to be Boondock Saints 2 All Saints Day. Now, I gotta say, this one's got to be a sequel, to, one of the sequels that's on par, on par with the original. I mean, and everybody from the first one that came back, almost everyone, well, in flash platform like Rocco, of course, and the cat. <laughs> I mean, mm. especially in the director's cut where where the whole cat just shows up and show, shows up just in random places, and it's always the same one. And of course, Connor and Mur Murphy always was freaked out. But you gotta give it to, to the rest of the cast too, like. Billy Connolly reprising his role as Il Duce, though the name Il Duce was never once mentioned in the sequel, but what we do learn his real name was Noah McManus, but we all didn't did know he was a McManus after the first at the end of the first movie. Movie when he when they found out he was when he found out he was their dad when when the boys found out they, they he was their dad. And of course, back to the cat. The first one where you had to the old one that scene where Rocco shakes the cat. Hmm. I say hmm. Nine millimeter. Must have took all nine lives at one point at one time. But back to the second one where you had the course with everybody with. All the characters from the first one reprising their roles. Kind of like you had, of course, Sean Patrick Flannery and Norman Reedus reprising their roles as Connor, Mur Mur Connor Murphy. And Bob Marley and David Ferry, and I can't remember the other guy's name right now. No, don't take this, no, no disrespect. Reprising their roles as Troy, Greenlee, and Duffy. And of course, and also you got got a bit part with Rob Wells, aka Ricky from Trailer Park Boys, playing Jimmy the Gopher <laughs> with with Julie Julie Benz as Agent Eunice Bloom, which I'm gonna say excellent, excellent choice because. Because she actually was able to pull off a more southern accent than, than Tara Reid would have been. And yeah, according to Internet Movie Database, it was really supposed to have been Tara Reid for that role. But but talk about a save edge. No disrespect, Tara Reid, if you're watching this. And of course, of course, you, of course, you got to have a have a Cameo at the end of, right at the end of, of Willem Dafoe, who faked his death to go off the red to help the boys. And, oof, and Clifton Collins as Romeo, who was basically just Mexican Rocco. And, and, I'll say, that's one underrated actor. All, and somebody who, well, first time I've, I've, I seen or heard of him was, was when he played Caesar Villapando in San, Grand Theft Auto San Andreas, and of course, this was also the last movie for Gerard Parks, aka Doc, or or for the movie they always refer to him as Fuck Ass Man, I'm a funny guy for an old guy with Tourette's. Whole, whole funny scene, another funny scene was like the, you know, mention the guns and, you know, mention the gun guy and he shows them, some of the old guns and, and the old funny when they all had that song Balls Deep start playing. Thing. And, of course, excellent soundtrack for the both of them where, but for this one, there's a lot of funny scene where Greenlee's listening to, fuck, listening to, 
listening to the Night Ranger at the crime scene. You know, yeah, at the drug lab. And I gotta say, that was a funny reenactment from the, the actual how the, the actual showdown and the whole deal with all where's Kerr Murphy trying to fight at a little box while Roman's in the forklift and then and they're just racing they just whip out their baratas with silenced there and then funny, and funny before this incident where they had to get their whole guy hostage in Romeo tries to pistol with the guy with a little twenty two, and I'm just like, I get that it was kind of a gag and all, but uh, something like a little, a literally little tiny twenty two knockoff PPK knockoff kind of gun, but they could have used like a a rock or a vault gave him gave him the six shooter, kind of like this the Acavetta did when they screwed screwed Rocco over in the first movie, and an excellent deal with. Judd Nelson as as the Yakovet in this first move in the second movie. Although it was kinda weird. Nah. Judd Nelson was two years in real life was a couple, about a year or so older than Carla Rota who played who played Yakovet in the first movie. Kinda like kinda like B. Arthur and Estelle Getty in in Golden Girls, how they were mom mother and daughter yet yet B, B. Arthur was Older in real life than Estelle, but that back to the back to the Saints, and, and man, that back to that warehouse shootout and and the funny one of the funny ones that he what they showed what they really how it wanted to go on was uh was with the where they had like the seventies seventies music seventies porno music going on in the background, not into like the seventies action movies, which of course is where they. Most of their reference are like, you know, like, something like Charles Bronson or Clint Eastwood or Duke fucking Wayne. Yeah, when the scene where they're talking about Rocco and all, and he's trying to give him a, Rocco's ghost on a motivational speech, and he's all, not if nobody had it easy, it was hard men doing hard things, and that gives me a hard on. Not in a gay way, though. <laughs> you know, right after that scene, scene where, where Greenlee dies, spoiler alert. And kind of messed up where he just for his last words be psychomatic after getting just shot in the back with a shotgun by the by the Romans hitman. And speaking of him, excellent origin between him and El Duce when it pans to nineteen fifty eight and when when El Duce gets the call gets his call like how in the first one, the boys get there, get become vigilantes after they, they get a vision from from their from from God. You no, know, kind of like kind of like Boondock Saints is basically Bruce Brothers, but if it was an action movie instead of a comedy, <laughs> in a way. And of course, you had that scene where they where they had that had that. Metro gangster who they hold hostage and all. And, man. And the funny one where they hold him hostage at the beauty parlor and Julie Benz brings new meanings a happy ending. Give it for him. I mean, just, where he just starts into a, to a little, little car, cart and just writes the names Aaron Go Bragg and shit. And just run at the gangster bar and or before they my boys signs them with Romeo undercover as a bartender and mm, he had some and he had some really lit looking guns in that movie I mean I mean always as a gun that I always liked the 1911s I mean as a gun that won two but two war, world wars back to the movie I'll call it, but and of course, old epic fight scene where they in the tr in the boat when they meet when they meet Rock when they meet Romeo, of course because you know they couldn't fly and all because they had to have to hide the arsenal and all. Which I get the movie was taken ten eight, ten years between from the first one movie, but 
the whole buried guns thing when they're not using them. I had trope is just just kind of always a love hate relationship with it, which goes to the ending where where it ended on a cliffhanger. It's unresolved and and this critic here hates unresolved cliffhangers. But but given Norman Reedus later on went to do Walking Dead, I see why they hadn't did a third one. And and how and back to how epic of a performance Julia Benz did a uh, uh, playing playing Agent Bloom, and I was like she was badass too. I mean she made she made old Willem Dafoe kind of look like Mister Rogers in that movie. Although not not a knock, not, I ain't knocking it by the way, but she was on par and. A very underrated actress. Kind of like when they, I just let the scene when when she joins in on the shootout, you know, dressed in old western gear, you know, good old fashioned shoot 'em up scene when they get get yeah get all the bosses bosses and all, and also a funny performance by. Of Paul Johansson as Agent Kunstler. Yeah, and for the record, Paul Paul Johansson is not related to Scarlet, by the way. And of course, perfect name for Kunstler's given that, given that he was pl technically a cunt and that was supposed to be a cunt and Mister By the Book, <laughs> and not in a good way. Kind of like. Like if they never did a fair one, it'd been an excellent twist that they find out he was in on it with, you know, the mafia payroll and all. Kind of like when they go pan to the flashbacks where with Il Duce building his the infamous vest with the gun, the gun vest, and starting his vigilante spree. Only to find out he's betrayed by his best friend, played an old man form as Peter Fonda after, just as soon as his sons were born and. Set up as twenty five to life, given how both of them had the both Noah McManus and, and a Dan Connor after after the shootout after the epic shootout and and talking about ooh and an epic shootout. I mean, talk about some some downright equilibrium stuff right there, right there on the that kind of shootout. Peter Fonda as as the Roman. An excellent twist with, and they got to give it old Billy Connolly. Man, he was perfect for 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 Il Duce in both movies, especially that scene where he's getting getting the Romans hitman, the one that frames them for frames the boys for for the priest, and he just he goes taunts them with a Russian roulette deal of easy boys, that is working. Overall. Boom Knock Saints 2, All Saints Day, gets a, gets a 5 out of 5. Enjoy, people.